So good morning, everyone. So we're continuing uh, this day uh, for the uh, Refugee Integration Conference and Art Festival, which is a part of the Refugees in Towns Research Project running here at Tufts. So I am Stephanie Curry, ethnomusicologist at Tufts University, and I am a co-organizer of this event with Marina Lazetic and Charles Simpson. So uh, here we are in day two in this session, and we are very honored to welcome Chu Meng Soon, Tim Tu, Pusita Hui, and Kim Han Mies from the Anchor Dance Troupe, a Cambodian American community based nonprofit organization uh, that is based in Lowell, Massachusetts. So, uh, right before I let the member of the Anchor Dance Troupe introduce their activities and themselves and all the work that they're doing among the Cambodian American community and the broader uh, society in Lowell, uh, I just want to remind you. Uh, that you can ask question in the chat and I will convey your question in the chat. So at any moment you can put a question in the chat and uh, if you want you can also ask yourself the question. You signal in the chat that you would like to ask a question and I will invite you to uh, talk directly to uh, the artist and the director of the Encore Dance Troupe that we have uh, here with us. Mm -hmm. So uh, without waiting any further I will let Chum Hang uh, start the presentation. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Good afternoon, everybody. So I'm going to introduce you. I have with me, actually, uh, Master Teacher Kim Han Hoi, uh, Master Teacher Pusita, and um, Tim Tu, the founder of the Anchor Dance Group. Uh, today is an exciting day because uh, it's a part of uh, the local Cambodian community. We're excited to be joining the, the integration conference. And before we start, we actually faced some technical difficulty earlier, but this is all good because we're all in the learning process as COVID happened. Um, but can everyone see my screen? Yeah, yeah. All good? Okay. So for today's program, we're going to talk about the Anchor Dance Troupe. But before we do that, we're going to cover a little bit of um, Cambodia dance history. And in doing that, I just want to introduce to you Master Teacher Kim Han Hoi Mies, sorry, Master Teacher Kim Han Mies will be discussing about Cambodian dance history. But before he begin, I just want to give a little bit of an introduction to Cambodia, to Cambodian history, starting from the Angkor period to the Khmer Rouge. So Cambodia is a country that has been confronted with different construct of identity throughout its rich history. And this is due in part to the, due to the geographic location. Cambodia is situated between India and China. Lo local kingdom benefit from the exchange of the arts and ideas that took place between um, Southeast Asia. And uh, through this, uh, there was a centralizing achievement of the remarkable Angkor Empire in the early 1800s. And uh, the Khmer identity began to flourish during the Great Khmer Empire. And throughout its history, Cambodia encountered many different permutations. And among one of them is uh, the Khmer Rouge. During that time, in less than 20 years, uh, between, um, in less than 20 years, between the French colonization in 1950 to 1975, Cambodia experienced the Khmer Rouge. The U.S. bombed Cambodia under the Nixon administration, 2.7 tons of explosive, excelling the amount dropped during the Japanese war. And overnight, Cambodia was faced with the loss of one-fourth of its population, and many other families were displaced. Because of this, um, Lowell became one of the well-known city, refugee city for Cambodian, and were actually the second largest population of uh, uh, Khmer people. So that's just a little bit background, but I'm going to let Kim Han Mies do most of the history. Again, going back to the Angkor Empire, the ritual, the rich history, the function of dance and movement uh, in the Khmer Kingdom. <clears throat> But before I do so, um, I actually want to send out good blessing 
to our audience by introducing the blessing dance. The blessing dance is uh, usually performed bless is usually performed during special occasion, for example, like wedding. But in this case, um, during COVID-19, the Anchor Dance Troupe would like to dedicate this blessing dance for everyone, prosperity, and to stay healthy.
The, the blessing dance is welcoming and blessing the audience before any events start. So with that being said, I'm going to introduce to you uh, Lokru Kim Han. He's going to go a, a little bit deeper into the history beginning in the Angkor Empire. He's also going to talk about the ritual and the function of dance that plays a critical role in the Cambodian society. I will also be interpreting for Master Teacher Kim Han. So apologize if I misinterpret. He would like to welcome everybody that will be participating in today's conversation. 
khi ba chục mươi cầm há ở tây tạ chia một tây của thôn bảo thôn sơn lập bắc hai nông chiêu cưu bằng hạt tập ba nông đoàn tây và nơi thằng tập ba mông cô phong đài My name is Kim Han Mies. I work for the department, the performance art department in Cambodia, and I am a music and dance teacher at the Angkor Dance Troupe. Thay đi nhóm bên kia để du, để bàn một chai làm lê, sọt sai, làm pi, làm rung, làm bàn mai pi. Nhóm nâng lượng dương một bằng hai chun, ở lục nè ở bàn dương đằng cái bàn pi. It is my honor to present this, to be here and present this presentation on Cambodian dance history. The first part of um, history, uh, especially going to dance repertoire, I'm going to introduce to you the Cambodian Royal Ballet. And the second uh, repertoire would be traditional dance or the folk dance. Uh, classical dance has a history that date back to the Angkor Empire. Yeah. Since the early Angkor Empire, uh, scholars, architects, and many other um, royal family have uh, dedicated the celestial dance, also the earlier form of classical dance, Cambodian uh, repertoire, um, to dedicate the celestial dancer as a form of communication between uh, heaven and earth, called uh, called Tonta. Uh, translated translated to become the celestial dancer are dedicated for the higher being for communicating between heaven and earth. Those who are selected to become the celestial dancer serve the royal family both in the ritual performance as well as a concubine to the king. Yeah. These performers, these celestial performers, were dedicated and traveled all over the kingdom of Cambodia to perform at sacred temples. Yeah. Uh, due to war and conflict within the Kingdom of Cambodia, the great empire of Angkor Wat, um, the kingdom separated into three capital, the capital of Udong, Oh, the capital of um, the cool capital uh, Tim Wai, okay. Um, uh, first capital is Long Wai, the second capital is Udong, and then the third capital is Phnom Penh currently today. Uh, ดูชนะให้ตํารงสลปะระบังปัจจุบันนี้ก็คล้ายตัวที่เอาชมูมวยเทียนให้ทาตํารงปริจตรอได้ตํารงนี้คือตรอบานบรรดาบังคับบังเ
dancers traveled with the king from those three capital until current day to the main capital of Cambodia and Phnom Penh. And uh, they dedicate themselves and also their function have ch shifted from celestial dancer to the royal ballet dancer, from ritualistic practice to a more governmental practice. Nuku, um, thought it? During this time, the function of the dance troupe have shifted. So therefore they serve the king as well as the people. So dance begin to open up to the larger Cambodian population. ແລະຊຸມາຍຈົນຄຣີມເຈບັນຕໍຫມົກມີການອະບົດຕະມີໃນປະຊາຊິກຄືມີປະຊາຊິກຄົງ <laughs> In the early 1970s, Cambodia has an absence of king of the royal family. Therefore, the Lono government took over where dancers were under the government. During this time, the dancer also served a different purpose. <laughs> Uh, because of the Lono government has uh, taken over the dance troupe, they also have open university for the Cambodian student to study classical dance. And the function for the Department of Performance Art during the Lono government was to serve the government and also to expand on the tourist industry and also to serve the people the people at the larger scale cool uh, even though in the earlier days, the dance troupe were placed inside the palace, in the earlier time, the dance troupe began to open up to the public and then other students began to study it. Uh, after the opening of the Royal University, there were a large population of STAN students. Mainly because of this reason, the people fell in love with the dance form and continue on passing down the knowledge from one generation to the next generation. Uh, this is the reason why there are different names for uh, each period that the dance has served, starting from the celestial dance, evolved into the world ballet, and then evolved to serve the purpose of the people under uh, the Lono government. Uh, hi. Yeah. The reason why the Cambodian classical dance is important and what made it special is that there was only female actress. There was no male actress. There are four main roles in the Cambodian classical dance. 
ตัวตีมวยหาพาตัวเนี่ยรู้จิตัวเพราะนำนางเอาตีนาหรือกสนั The first role is the male role representing the god or the king. ตัวตีปีมีชมวยหาจิตัวเนียงจิตัวสไลนำนางเอาตีนาสไลหรือกริจนีหรือกจีสนัดสไล The second role is the female role representing the goddess or the queen. ตัวติบไปคือจิตตัวเยอะลำนางเอาไปอำเภอกระ And then the third role is the ogre or the giant representing evil. ไอ้ตัวติบุ้นคือจิตตัวหางมันจิตตัวลำนางอำเภอออก And then the fourth role is the monkey representing the good the hero the heroic character ហើយបើសិនជាលក្ខណៈពិសេសណាមួយត្រូវមានទួលអីសីឬក៏ជាទួលតាបោះឬក៏ជាទួលធ្លោកគ្រូលខោនត្រូវជ្រើសរើសគ្រូធំណាមួយដែលនៅក្នុងព្រះបរមរាជវាំងហ្នឹងដូចជាឧបរាជឬនិមើលណាអាចមកសម្ដែងជួយសម្ដែងបានដែ Under any special circumstances, for example, the hermit role, he would be requested by the the royal family would request a higher rank official or a master teacher to perform the hermit role, and this is due to only under any special circumstances in a drama. Hi, t h r o n g s a l a p a n i d a e k r a l p i m a n g k a t m e n t a l a v i c h a l a p a m o k គេអាចបង្រត់បង្ហាត់បង្រៀនទូលអំហាក់នៅម៉ានជាទូលប្រុសវិញមិនឲ្យស្រីរាំទៀតទៀតដោយសារកម្លាំងស្ត្រីមានភាពទំសោយ In the modern day the Hanuman role are fulfilled by men because female or women are not capable of carrying the movement ហើយទម្រង់សិល្បៈរបស់បុរាណនេះលេងកំដោដោយវង្គ្រេងពិនពាតនឹងបើជំរៀងពិនពាតដើម្បីមរាអយរបាំប្រិយត្រប់នេះ Cambodian classical dance are served with the Cambodian classical orchestra The classical orchestra is also another form of art that was served to the higher being and uh, communicating between heaven and earth So therefore both dance and music play a critical role in the Cambodian classical dance ហើយទម្រង់កាតបតែងខ្លួនរបស់ប្រមាំបរិយត្រប់គឺការតបតែងខ្លួនបែបជាជាទេវតាបែបជាមនុស្សដែលមានឋានៈបុណ្យសក្តិខ្ពស់ដូចជាស្តេចឬក៏ជាទេវតា Classical dance usually ornate themselves to represent the god goddesses kings giants and monkeys អរបាំនេះជាអាតីតកាលមកគឺគេមិនឲ្យទួលអ្នកសម្ដែងទាំងអស់នោះផាត់មុខមេកអាប់របៀបជាមនុស្សធម្មតាទេគឺគេផាត់មុខពសោគឺដើម្បីជាភាពបរិសុទ្ធិ៍សម្រាប់រាំថ្វាយដល់ព្រះអាទិទេ Going back to the celestial dance the celestial dance painted themselves pure white versus the modern day classical dancer Are not allowed to do so because they don't serve the higher be, uh, purpose or the ritual. So the difference is they're painted white versus modern day dancer. m u l h a t thom m p o t k m o p i g o m c h o n g p a n j o l p i a m p i p i t h a r o b a n p i r b a n ni m o p i p i t h a r o b a n k k a b a t b a n p i r u មនុស្សធម្មតាទៅជាទូអង្សេងដែលជាដំណាងឲ្យទេវៈបំណាងឲ្យទេវតាសម្រាប់ជាអ្នកប្រុសព្រមជាអ្នកនាំពាកនាំតន័យពីខាងមនុស្សធម្មតាទៅខាងទេវតា There's there's something interesting in this evolution and that is the word itself the word r o b a m representing dance the word itself means to transform or to put on a form of costume the word r o b a n g slowly transform into r o b a m which we are known today and the word r o b a n g 
originally means transform. So the dancers transform themselves into gods and goddesses in, in uh, practicing these rituals. Hi, I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry to interrupt. I, I know this is very important part because this is the core of the dance that is performed at uh, Angkor Dance Troupe, but I'm afraid we're going to lack uh, time uh, if we go into further detail. And I think Le Kim Han really uh, detailed all the important points of uh, the history of uh, classical Khmer dance. We really have a clear understanding of the importance for Cambodian culture of this art form. I agree, Steph. Um, sorry, Stephanie, give me one minute as I get my charger and I apologize for not being prepared. <laughs> and so I was wondering if during that time, uh, Putim, if you could yeah. uh, tell us about Angkor Dance Troupe, the organization that you founded when you arrived in Lowell. Yeah. Well, first of all, let me welcome to everybody. Welcome to Dr. Stephanie and welcome to all the staff from Top University and also member of the Angkor Dan Troop, uh, Assistant Director Pusta Hoi and Master Kam Han and also uh, Jermaine, uh, one of uh, the best assistant for Luku Nakru Pusta and also uh, Luku Kam Han. Uh, I came to Lo 19. 82, which is that only 10 family. I just want to back up to like a couple of years before uh, established uh, uh, five, 501c3 uh, become a legal organization. So I came to 1982, just only 10 family in low. So because people move to low because that, uh, uh, because of job opportunity, there is a small town, there's a lot of companies around it there you can choose like pick and choose, there's so many things that you don't have to worry about uh, go far away. So that's the reason why a lot of people float in. So the couple of years during that 82 to 86, there is uh, a lot of people come over that 10,000, 20,000 move in from different uh, states to come to low. So back then, so I was uh, trained and learned the dance uh, at the refugee app group, which is that, uh, at, the refugee, which is in Thailand, uh, the name of the camp is the Kawidan camp. So I came to 1979. So I learned the dan, which is a folk dan, through the master who uh, survived through the genocide. So one are male and female. And both of them right now, one is passed away, one, the other one went to the other country that's uh, Swiss, that I remember that. So, and then I learned from the among the other the dancer. So when I Came, and then I left uh, Kavidang, I go to transit. So I, I, I stay there mm -hmm. and uh, so I have trained and also I have teach. So then I moved to the Philippines. That's my background. I moved to the Philippines and then I formed another dance organization. And then 1981, like mid, like beginnings of 82, so I, I went to uh, Maryland. So Maryland and I stayed there for six months with my grandmother and then moved to Massachusetts in 1982. So and then 1986, that Uncle Zip established 51C3 with the other member of the dancer who learned at <clears throat> the same time, 79 to you know, 81, you know, 80, 81, and then through the camp. So when it came to low, there is among the other uh, dancer who had experience and that then in the refugee camp. So we performed together. I'm the one is lead and uh, dancer and also with uh, uh, the teacher. So I teach the other one is not learning it dance, so they want to be part of that. So we perform just one special occasion, like once in a while, like New Year, and you know, not not wide variety like nowadays. We just do that because they want to share that knowledge again through the community and also share to the other. So and then the uh, and then the refugee art group that who established at the same time so they want to help out the other organization around the new england to start making sure that we have 51c3 and you know process so because that you have to go through that if you want to apply for the grant so they need that you know formation and then also the id to go through it instead of individual like you know uh, id so that become that so back then we focus on more to the folk then so original idea uh, be, before we start, we just want to make sure we, we want to be able to establish. We want to be make sure we know the dance we want to share. Not thinking about what, you know, like the big major picture like this one. So we just want to make sure we learn, we know the dance, we want to pass on to the next one. 
So we want to make sure what we know from the teacher and we will pass on to the next one. And then, so back then we have a folk uh, dance role as like my, myself as instructor, they have the other uh, member uh, of the dancer who learn in the camp. And also we have um, a member who learn like classical dance as well, but we're not serious like, you know, up, after Pusita came in. So because uh, Pusita is uh, well-trained from uh, Royal Yerushalayim and she more, uh, you know, like perfection and all to the dance. So they want to bring up to the dance to the high level of that. So 86 to 97, early that. And so the Encore then took the big hit uh, during the 1990 when the tour came to load. That's a big hit. So that means inspired by all the artists and inspired by those performance. So, so they make the anchor and troop and not just a troop, but the other uh, Dan organization around England really bring up, really push, you know, high level of that when they all left. So that kind of thing that make the troop want to be bring up to that the same level. So after they left, like 90, so 97, seven years later, Pusita came. So I met her one at Chica Pillow. So after that, a year later, she came. So they can join, so we invite her. So she live in Lowe. So her husband, you know, that resident in Lowe. So she live in Lowe, so they help and, you know, uh, teach the classical dance. So then become like, now become like uh, folk and classical, but like, like classical, they get more better than, than used to be. That used to be just only performing, just only folk dance and small classical dance, but they just they, they, uh, like uh, in terms of uh, uniform, in terms of like uh, jewelry, we just make whatever that we can make around in here. So after the the troop, the tour left, so there is a lot of access you can order the stuff from Cambodia. And during 1990, like a couple of years before that, we have a lot, like we bring master one or two every year to come and teach the dance group. That's what uh, we request through a uh, refugee art group and through the New, New England Foundation for the Art, NIFA, so that they help and support. So we got like a lot of, uh, so that we can get like the master through them so they can sponsor, they can come and teach a uh, dancer back then. Thank this is um, where the story begins, starting to pick up. The story of integration, the story of introducing the Cambodian American, the refugees community into working with the dance troupe and also building that exchange, that relationship between the master dancers and the teacher through the arts become a, uh, a critical way of thinking, critical way of moving and communicating within that community, sharing each other uh, resources. Um, in fact, there was a, I'm gonna share a screen real quick. <clears throat> there was a saying by Lokta Cheng Pon. He's one of the well-known philosophers in Cambodia and he talks about the rebuilding of Khmer soul through arts and culture. And uh, thinking about these concepts as not just a spiritual value and a virtues, but to build trust, honesty, tolerance, and moderation in the Khmer society. And we can think of it as uh, both here in Lo and also in Cambodia alone. Um, so he believed that arts and the rebuilding of Khmer soul is through dance, art, music, right? That built trust, that built honesty, that built tolerance and moderation. And I'm gonna show you a video, elements of example, where um, students of the Anchor Dance Troupe present their themselves. Uh, I'm gonna share a video, so just give me a minute. <clears throat> where they get a chance to become immersive of um, this experience and the experience the dance troupe have offered to them. My name is V2Touch, I am 17 years old and I've been in the dance troupe for about 12 years so far. I'd say the best part of being fitted is really having the costume on after you've been fitted and everything. Like you'll look at yourself in the mirror and just look at yourself like, wow, I look so awesome right now. My least favorite part about being fitted, I guess, is probably the process of getting fitted. Sometimes like it takes like a, sometimes 30 minutes to an hour. Hi, my name is Peter Che. I'm 18 and I've been dancing with the Anchor Dance Street for six years now. For me, performing, it's all that hard work that we do before we perform. 
all that working and all the effort that we put into just learning the choreography and to also put it out there on stage for other people to see and understand. It's just that hard work pay off after. That's why I feel like it's a great feeling. It's, it's exciting. My name is Emily Horn. I am 23 years old. I've been dancing for 16 years and I am now a communications coordinator. The Anchor Dance Troupe has been a second home for me. I feel like when I was growing up, I was very Americanized and being able to come here as a child really taught me about my Cambodian culture and all the stories and the history about it. So I was really able to understand my parents and my grandparents that way. Uh, so, sorry, let me. So again, we see these process of integration from one generation to the next generation and that flow of information are through the arts and through the dance, um, passing knowledge from master teachers, from Tim Tu to the next generation. And we see, we continue on seeing these evidence as um, the process of integration become the process of exchange. And, uh, and specifically 2015, I'm gonna share my screen one more time. Specifically in, um, Two thousand fifteen, where Prasita began to direct the Abstract Dancing Stone. Um, the Abstract Dancing Stone really talks about this relationship of uh, Kamrat, this character who traveled to Cambodia and experienced this cultural shock, his own identity, where he traveled in time to meet all of the uh, mythical characters, right, to help him understand his current situation, but to also teach him this value of the Khmer culture, the architecture, the identity that construct Cambodia. Um, so in, and so he carried these ideas with him, these stories to America to tell the story. But what made this, uh, the After Dancing Stone, an interesting project is the collaboration between the classical and the contemporary, where classical form are infused to help translate and to help the process of integrating the Cambodian community with the low community. And that really builds that relationship to continue on making bodies of work. And uh, here are some images. And it's, it's also a fun process for our actor and actress to learn about these stories and to learn about the, the process of um, integration, the process of narrative, storytelling. So student integration becomes a critical point of view for the dancer because they get to interview, to talk, to have this conversation, right? And what these conversations do is it helps break down barriers. It helps us understand our past and it helps us build that tolerance to continue on telling these stories, to preserve history. And so the Anchor Dance Troupe also focuses on exchange project. Our reason exchange project was in 2015 with uh, Rufa. And in the exchange process, right, there's always a push and there's always a pull factor, the process of integrating into, uh, integrating new ideas, integrating contemporary ideas into the dance, even costume, even dance movement. It's a push and a pull. And that factor built up and it's an interesting process to, to observe. Uh, you can see that sometimes um, preservation overcome the idea of innovation. Sometimes innovation uh, built up in the choreography of the dancer. Here's some more image. Um, this was taken in Cambodia during one of the cultural exchange. I'm gonna skip this quote. I'm just gonna jump into um, Rain and Life. Rain and Life was uh, directed by Lukru Kim Han. And what made Rain and Life interesting is that we actually get to collaborate. Our collaboration with Tuff University become a strong bonding and it allows us to see further 
into the work that we can do with the community. Uh, so Kim Han directed this um, story, this narrative, but Prasita actually chose the musical piece that correlate with the, the story, the narrative um, and the choreography for the dancer. Uh, Stephanie brought a group of students with musical ability to actually rewrite the whole musical notation for this piece to happen. Um, the crew, can you talk a little bit about uh, this play and what the importance is? Look, I need to take my time to be so can they can not hung hung this look. Look, my my some day look. ลูกโอเอาเอาโอ้ខ្ញុំស្ដាប់ដឺលោកគោអាកោ <coughs> 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 So the reason why Kim Han brought this uh, story to perform is because the Cambodian people value rain and rain really contextualizes their life, their daily activity and their, their doing, right? So and in doing so, he wants to present the important of the harvest season. He wants to also celebrate the moment of harvesting, the, the, the Cambodian everyday life that they, um, that they do, uh, the importance of agriculture in the Cambodian daily life. Yeah. <laughs> And secondly, he also wants to present the preservation of these ritual performances. Uh, and thirdly, he also wants to present the everyday life of the human people, the people of Cambodia who cultivated these landscapes. Um, so again, the story, built up this momentum, this exchange, this conversation between uh, artistic director Pusita and Kim Han and also conversate with um, the Royal, uh, the, sorry, the University Tuff to produce this collaborative piece and also allows the dance group to see insight into new ways, new mode of making and producing art to um, allow storytelling to flourish. Yeah, so, So I think Stephanie, this is a good time for us to take in any questions because I think we cover a good deal of um, the process of how the dance troupe slowly introduce themselves and then integrate and then build up that exchange and then hitting a moment of equilibrium between the community of law and the dance troupe. Thank you so much. Uh, all of you for the presentation and it was very interesting to highlight the importance of dance and how dance was really a medium to reconnect with uh, the new generation of Cambodian American who were born in Lowell and uh, to hear how dance helped them to reconnect with how they once said with her parents and with her grandparents and uh, I think this is uh, something really beautiful in the use of art and I have one question and uh, of course, everyone can ask a question on the chat or you can just unmute and jump in and ask a question. I would like to ask, uh, because I know that uh, you are uh, conducting a lot of uh, projects with the city of Lowell. And mm -hmm. I would like to know if you can tell us a little more about the work that you're doing, the partnership that you have to work with uh, the public school system or the city hall. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so the public school system play a critical role in developing the momentum of integration. And uh, the program began in early uh, thousand, where um, the dance was commissioned to go to public school. And um, during the commission, we are able to teach students in the public system, specifically both um, all races, including Cambodian Americans specifically, about their culture, about the dance, about preservation aspect of um, the dance group. As well, taking that opportunity to begin recruiting to source those uh, dancers who have the ability and the talent. And I can tell you this, a lot of the dancers that we have now today are sources from the public school system. And this relationship is important, not just, not just at um, the preservation level, but also to build momentum to move forward in preservation. And those children that you uh, have through the public school system, are they all Cambodian American? Or do you have children who joined because they find, because oh, yeah. curiosity? Yeah. Because curiosity, because um, fun, because uh, the, the interesting part about dance is the elaborate, the elaborate costume. Like uh, Lokruhan said, um, it takes hours to get into these costumes, as you can tell. Uh, so one of the important thing is that students, they're intrigued by, okay, I, I see them dancing on stage, so I want to look good. I want to look pretty like them. So then they would join and participate. And it's almost like a tight knit family once they start learning and picking up those movements. And um, yeah, it's all about exposing the middle school age student to these formats, to these dancers. And uh, the public school really gives the dancers that opportunity. Thank you. That's very interesting. I remember the first time I uh, heard about Encore Dance Troupe, I had just arrived uh, in the area and uh, I went to Lowell because it was a water festival in the summer. And then I saw the Encore Dance Troupe on the stage and performing and I became very curious about the work uh, that you're doing and all the public, how you invest public spaces by dancing for festival, dancing for different occasions throughout the year. And I, uh, I found out last year, well, last uh, spring, because it got canceled, it's like the Encore Dance Troupe is also performing at the City Hall uh, to commemorate the uh, end of the genocide. And I found this particularly meaningful that the what is your relation with the city hall or what is your relation with the city how the cambodian american uh, community is being embraced by uh, the uh, city the city yeah so the city really provides a lot of support and um the support actually comes in as we begin to develop um these young dancer they become the leader of the community uh, the city provide grant funding for that aspect, for one. And then um, what the Anchor Dance Troop, what that funding is that we help the younger dancers to build their uh, leadership skill, to go out there and um, learn how to communicate, learn how to uh, talk and grow, and actually exposed to um, the school system, uh, college system. But aside from that, the city also support uh, the dance troop in terms of inviting us to perform the blessing dance in which we did for you guys in the beginning to allow the exposure to the community that there is vibrancy in this community that it's not just cambodian american but there's all uh, many other culture in here usually um we perform for the city when during the flag raising uh we perform for the city during Khmer new year and Khmer new year is actually another second social uh social uh exchange that we do with the community in particular that a lot of Cambodian gather during that time a lot of Cambodians celebrate Khmer New Year and water festival in front of the the Merrimack River so the us performing there is really opening up the community to seeing us more to say that we are here to help um, the community build uh, the culture to continue on innovating, to continue on building and to continue on, most importantly, listen to the community, listen to their needs and listen to their um, ideas about preservation and uh, preserving the, the culture, yeah. So 
the, the, the city really allows us that opportunity to listen to our community. It is a great initiative. So yeah. now I, I would, I will stop asking questions and, and let the audience ask a uh, question. So who would like to, to, who has a question in the audience and, or just would like to say something about the work of the Encore Dance Troupe and the way they rely on dance and music to strengthen the community? I have one question. Um, hi, thank you so much. This is really interesting. I didn't know anything and I feel like I've learned so much from you and your story and a lot about the dance and um, thank you so much for sharing. Um, I guess because the conversation is about, you know, integration and we had so many conversations yesterday too. And yesterday, one of the panels, we were also talking about sort of this difference between younger generations and older generations and how each carries home or idea of home and then kind of how there's some like a little bit of tension. And I think that kind of came through in your presentation as well. And I would love to hear about that tension a little bit more and how you resolve it. And then also um, in this context of integration, you know, you agree with us so much of cultural preservation as well and, mm -hmm. and kind of nurturing the identity and culture as well. So I, I was wondering if you could share with us and tell us more from your experience about this. Is, is it a tension at all? It um, is. It is. It's and definitely is. And, 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 and um, it's exciting tension, and it's a tension that uh, actually builds and create and perform. And this is the tension that we often talk about um, creation of dance pieces, the uh, allowing contemporary idea to begin infusing to the dance troupe, right? Especially during this time, COVID-19, when we're virtually studying on Zoom, right? we begin to move from dancing to thinking about what is the current social function of the dance group. And these conversations often happen with the younger generation versus the older generation, where there's a lot of focus and preservation. And that focus of preservation really built that tension of um, within the older kids versus the younger kids, the younger generation of uh, wanting to innovate. And when those two collide, right, there's this tension when they collide, a creative performance piece begin to flourish. And an example of that is in um, Rain and Life. Uh, when we work with um, Dr. Stephanie in composing the music, uh, in particular, we start seeing tension in choreography, right? Uh, do we want to go ballet or do we want to go contemporary or do we want to go hip hop? Where are we leaving the classical piece of Cambodian dance, the Cambodian identity, right? These are larger questions that we personally continue on asking and continue on building upon. And um, it is these questions that I believe will thrive as we go through COVID. And it's slowly beginning because the student begin to ask themselves, what is really the current function of dance in society right now, right? Where we don't actually see performers on stage, but where you guys are now beginning to watch dancers on Zoom call, right? So they're, they're slowly beginning to conversate, to have a conversation about these topic, to begin building um, visual language, to begin looking at choreography from that aspect. But on the opposite hand, um, older dancer uh, begin to still continue on having conversation about preservation. And so when those two start to diverge, they somehow will meet and collide again. And I think probably somewhere in 2022, when they, those two collide, it's going to be um, an exciting performance. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> And I, I just want to make a quick parenthesis about uh, uh, Rain and Life. The music that was uh, composed was actually Nyakru uh, Pusita. She she came to me and she was like, I would like to create something new based mm -hmm. on those the pieces of those two artists, uh, which are uh, Sensi Samot and Avostere Satia, based on recording archives that we had. So that 
1960s singers who, who died during the genocide. And so all we had were the uh, music. Uh, it was a clip circulating on Facebook. Right. And so she was like, I would like to cut this part and to slow down this one, to repeat this one. I want to create something completely new from this musical material. How can we do that? And I was right. like, I have plenty of students who would be so happy to do this for you. And so this is how we, uh, they uh, rewrote the whole score according to what she needed and to what was uh, needed for the performers and the musical instrument involved. So that right. was, a, that was a very, uh, it was very uh, good partnership. It was, yeah. And a, a part of learning from that partnership is um, thinking about produce, finding material, first of all, finding what we can find in the community, listening to the community, what they want, right? And bringing that to then go to Stephanie and say, um, we want to see if you can recreate this music piece. And then I think that's where our identity lies. Right. That's what makes us different than um, dance group from California, from France or from Cambodia. It's because we source everything from low messages that we do what we can and we do it to our best ability. And sometimes funding lacks, but we still manage to push forward. And a part of that is um, Pusita, Tim and Kim Han all combined together, working together. OK, we have this amount of money. How can we make it work? And then right there. And so I have another question. I'm sorry, I'm asking all the questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, uh, I would like to know what are the, because you're doing a very in-depth work within the community and we can see how meaningful it is for the kids to come and I know that I brought my student to the Encordance Troop on Sunday and they were always amazed to see kids running everywhere and kids very eager to, to learn or just to hang out uh, mm -hmm. with each other. And uh, I am, my question is like, uh, in which occasion, I know that you share a lot with the uh, community in Lowell, not just the Cambodian American community, but also communities uh, that are formative of the city of Lowell, which is very multicultural and so uh, my question is like what are those occasions where people who are not Cambodian American come to see you and come to uh, show interest into your work? Oh yes plenty of occasion um, but highlighting the folk festival is the most important occasion it's because um, Kim Han is able to bring his uh, classical music experience and then Pusita is able to bring in another element of classical experience. So when dance and music collide um, and during the folk fest, we're able to, I think Low Massachusetts has the largest free folk festival in the US. So this is where everyone gathered up of all different ethnicity um, from all different uh, state from Utah, California, everywhere where arts flourish every summer uh, during July. So Every two years, the Anchor Dance Troupe has the opportunity to perform at the Folk Festival. And this is where um, we present one of our most uh, well-known drama, the Ramayana, uh, Rimke. And Prasita would bring the element of classical dance, where Kim Han bring the element of music. And um, together, they built this beautiful uh, drama that performs for all and everyone that comes to this festival. As well as um, the Water Festival, Southeast Asian Water Festival brings in Southeast Asian from all over the United States, from Texas, from California. This is where we actually also present our new pieces, our up and coming um, show and performances. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else has a question? <laughs> That's one probably. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi, Stephanie. Hi. 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 Kim Chomo Celia. Um, I actually do research about uh, classical dance in Cambodia. Um, so oh, I know wow. Stephanie for a long time. Yeah. Of that. Exciting. Um, Welcome. So, uh, thank you. Um, so I was wondering two things. First of all, is, is Pusita here on the Zoom? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we haven't heard from her. So I was wondering. <laughs> Answer more questions, yeah, sure. I was wondering, uh, Pusita, um, 
what is what is the is it a different experience uh if you've taught in cambodia and taught in the united states is it a different experience teaching students um in lowell than it is teaching in cambodia um and then a second question which i suppose could be for anyone <clears throat> excuse me anyone um do you are do you also perform outside of uh, Lowell, are you performing in other places in the U.S. and what is that experience like? Mình ca hát có trong số mình ta, bê mình ta hát công sân nước sọc mai, nâng công sân nâng ở đấy. Mình mà rong nhàng mình ta hát khóc nghe nhàng mình. Dạ, ca hát này sọc mai, mình ca phụ rụng tu. Hả? Yep, mình dạy đó. When I teach in Cambodia. When I teach in Cambodia, that very different. In Cambodian, very expected teacher and very uh the discipline yeah, yeah. discipline yeah. on time and united states is hard for this uh different the student is not disciplined like income the student it's is hard like master yeah and they um they hard to understand cambodian language mm. and Plain like different uh, uh, different language like Khmer and English. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I want to talk Khmer, explain to the student, but the student don't understand. Just follow me like the gesture. So mm -hmm. it's hard, and they they don't discipline. They don't listen. Just some people, some student just come not love the dance. Just the the family push him push mm. them to come to learn so they just come and learn it's not pay attention it's hard in mm. cambodian you have to learn pay attention listen to the teacher mm -hmm. so very very hard very different like that and and the language too and sometimes i uh, the music have a only the cambodian song sing mm. and they don't listen just to follow uh, in the gesture, I, I uh, teach in the front and they just follow. They don't understand the, the, the meaning of the song. Yes, yes. Yeah, and this is interesting. Um, discipline is so different than being... I was born in Cambodia, so mm -hmm. I carry my discipline from Cambodia. But when it comes to teaching Cambodian American, the level of discipline are challenge, meaning teachers become they lower down their expectation one notch uh, and then learning how to bond with the student and understanding the psychology of um, the student and then once that's built up once that relationship built up mm -hmm. the respect begin to be gained and then students start paying attention and this is often the case um, even though sometimes students are forced to join the dance troupe um, they slowly grow up to love the dance, even though they don't love it in the beginning. They hate it. In some cases, they hate it so much that they don't even participate. And then overnight, boom, they just love the dance. <laughs> we have uh, a lot of those cases. And the group. Uh, so then, um, Jermaine, uh, mm. I want to speak my the easy. Uh, many students uh, student in Cambodia focus in um, the career in dance. And here is after school program. So you see the two difference? Those yeah. two different really separate uh, after school program versus a career. But that doesn't mean that um, there's no career in dance here in America. Uh, on many occasions, the dance troupe encourage a career um, path for it. Meaning it, they might not be participate fully in the dance, but they manage the dance troupe. Mm. 
sắc vị chư mà nay giờ hiện bạc con kê tế chư việt sài nhạc khá vừa some student is very spoiled đàn chân bạc in tí ạch bàm dương thử thân nôm chất thân nôm tận ơ đàn chân vị ạch sơ lọ ọt bị nơi sọc khmai I have to, I have to lower down my heart. I have to lower down my um, expectation for the student when uh, I am fixing them so that they don't get hurt or so that they don't get injured. Mm. Yeah. Um, do you, sorry, just a follow-up question. Um, are there ever any students who like express a desire to um, maybe learn additional technique or have private lessons so that they could get to a higher level? Yes, so we have that. Uh, so this is where it's important when we go out to low public school. This is where the low public school play a critical role. Actually, student, but beyond sourcing, we know we see talent and we actually see the passion as teacher. Pusita Lukuruhan, they see passion in a student the student would actually just join the dance troupe right there. Usually in one semester, we have one or two students who passion is, is in there and we see their talent, we see their ability. And um, this is where one-on-one -on -one become a critical uh, uh, play in developing the student. Once the students are selected, then um, teachers begin to dedicate a special role, special specialty for them. And that's where they narrow down their focus. And uh, occasionally within a generation, you would see one or two of those students. And um, we have Chana, we have um, Peter, we have a handful of them, but they're all from different generation. They're not all from one generation of dancer. They travel as groups because that's um, how we organize the dance group based on. And at the end of the day, we would have just one or two. Mm. Yeah, when I saw the student have a talent, I have to teach them hard mm -hmm. and training. Sometimes I call, come from my house to teach training a lot of time. Yeah, when I saw that. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't and, and, and Jermaine, I'd like to add to that as he's asked a question that the troop has performed like outside of, yes, we perform outside that uh, low. We went to like Philadelphia, we went to a Long Island, we went to New York and says so like outside, it's not just happening here in a uh, state, but mm -hmm. also we perform outside as well. In France and Cambodian too. Yeah, so when we perform outside the country to Cambodia and um, to France, this is critical, this is important. The same, the same knowledge, we all share the same single knowledge, but what made it different is that the language are being more uh, expanded on, upon. Language and technique are being expanded upon. Uh, Nakru Pusita is here in Lowell, Massachusetts, while her friend is in um, DC and her other friend is in France. They all carry different technique and knowledge. And so when Nakru Pusita student travel from Lowell to France, when the, the Cambodian American collide with the French Cambodian, they begin exchanging and expanding um, ideology, mythology, storytelling, uh, movements, narrative, um, even uh, playing around in, in dance choreography. Uh, this helps expand the mind, expand the, the freedom to move. Um, and this is the reason why it's uh, important for us to. Uh, do the this exchange outside the country mm. opens up a whole new world language thank you i have a, a question that bounce off of that is like because of the public performance that you're giving because of your work in the public school system and in the different public schools in lowell do you feel and that's a question for for the four of you is like do you feel that this public representation of Cambodian culture and heritage through dance and music has changed uh, the way Cambodian American are seen in Lowell. Is, was there some change uh, of understanding or gain of knowledge that you have noticed among uh, people who, lives in Lowell, who live in Lowell, in Lowell and uh, who are not Cambodian American and uh, who but like, what is the reaction? Like, did you notice any uh, any change? 
ลูกคุณมันไปยังพาร์ทเนอร์ตามสลาพับลิกสกูลแล้วก็ลูกคุณตามมีการกัดเอ่อมีการพลัดตัวนะขนมสลับปากมาเยอะนะขนมอัตรา